Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the analysis of Fiorino TV. I hope you well from wherever you watch this channel. I have a very, very simple question. What was the motive behind nominating Oparanya for that CS position of, of cooperatives and MSC? What was the motive behind it? Did William Ruto try to expose or set up Oparanya with the people? Because what we're having right now is that the ESCC has responded to the vetting committee's letter that had requested ESCC to look into the names that have been submitted, whether those names, the people, are fit for the offices which they have been nominated. So the ESCC wrote a letter saying that Oparanya is not fit based on the corruption allegations that have been bedeviling him for quite some time ever since he was the governor so now i want us to go into that story and also there's a reaction from donald kikoriria which i also wish to read to you because we also know that uh vetting committee is starting its session today first of august 2024 and it's going to go until 4th of august 2024 and oparanya is scheduled to appear on the 4th of august 2024 so now the question here is, will he be vetted successfully based on this letter that has come from the ESCC? Let me first take you through this tweet from Donald Kikori. And he says, as the vetting of our cabinet ministers begin tomorrow, let me say a prayer for the following that as God touched the lips of Prophet Jeremiah, then Jeremiah, may God guide them in their interviews. One, Professor Kidure Kidiki, two, Ali Swahome, three, Julia Sogamba, four, Adel Duale, uh, five, John Badi, six, Hassan Ali Yo, and seventh, J.B. Muturi. Above all, I've always been and remained my friends for over 20 years, and I've never recalibrated our friendship. Their offices never changed them. I could have offered prayers for Rebecca Miano, Davis Chirchir and Kipchumba Murkomen, but they ended our friendship when they became ministers. I guess they didn't deem our friendship worth being big, worth their big offices. As for the others in the list, I don't know them. <laughs> so let me take you to Oparanya. Oparanya is not listed here, by the way. In this tweet, Oparanya is not there. Donald Kipuri says, I don't know them. So maybe he doesn't even know Oparanya. But let's not talk about that part of him not knowing them. Let us focus on this predicament that Oparanya finds himself in. Why did William Samoy Ruto go for Oparanya? And he knows very well that Oparanya has a case to answer. ESCC have been on Oparanya's neck for quite some time. And most recently, there was talk that the bank, that the, that, that the courts had requested that he submit his bank statement. And then some of his uh, assets were 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 seized by the state. There was that court order to have them seized. And so I think the, the bank statement is supposed to be provided so that the courts can investigate, do its own forensic uh, audit on the transaction so that they can actually identify any uh, co uh, proceeds of corruption uh, within his bank accounts. So I want us to go extensively into this Oparanya crisis, ladies and gentlemen. But before you get there, please like this video. It's so important if you like this video. I'm so grateful for everybody who has been liking our videos. I don't take that for granted. Subscribe to our channel if you've not subscribed before. And to existing subscribers, thank you so much for your support. Many people have said that Oparanya's name should be dropped. Of course, what the Genesis wanted is someone who is clean and someone who doesn't have any corruption on him. I must admit that Oparanya is one of those people I've uh, admired, but to, uh, for this case, Lazima Dabeba Msalabak. So, uh -huh. let me just take you through this letter, uh, ESCC, the letter from ESCC. The letter uh, is detailing some content here that Oparanya is in, is in the red because he's suspected to be in possession of corruption proceeds with the commission obtaining orders to freeze 28.9 million, you know. The letter from the ESCC was a response to a different letter written by the Clerk of National Assembly, which requested a background check on integrity matters for the nominees. 
While the Integrity Center, Center has cleared all the other nominees, Oparanya is facing a blockade due to the findings by the ESCC. And according to the Public Appointments Act, which outlines procedures for parliamentary approval of constitutional and statutory appointments, the issue for consideration by the relevant House of Parliament regarding any nomination include the procedure used to select the nominee and any constitutional or sexual requirements related to the office in question. So in very few words, what I'm trying to say is this. Oparanya still has a debt to the ESCC. Oparanya still has a debt to the courts regarding some corruption on allegation on him. Around 28 point something million uh, is being investigated. So the big question, ladies and gentlemen, is did William Ruto do some background check before he nominated Oparanya? Or maybe let me just reframe, refresh it this way. Was William Ruto trying to set up Oparanya with the people? Or trying to expose Raila Molodinga that Raila is you know, hanging out with corrupt individuals? What I need to tell you about this issue of Oparanya is that you know, anytime Oparanya is attacked, rest assured that the person who is being attacked is Raila. Raila and Oparanya are buddies. That is something that is known by so many people. In fact, it's out there in the public domain. And Oparanya himself has gone to an extent of saying, Raila is the person who made him, who built him politically. You remember the, the journey of Oparanya ever since he became, you know, the minister under the Grand Coalition. You know, I think he became a, he was a, par, a member of parliament. Then he became uh, as a minister under the coalition government. Then became a governor, ODM. Became a deputy party leader and a governor again, a governor for two terms. And now he's a deputy party leader. And then now he has been nominated by William Samaru. The question here is very simple. If at all people like Aisha Jumwa, people like Babayao, people like Sonko, so many of those who were given a CS nomination, if they had corruption allegations, but then the DPP ordered that all those cases be dropped. You remember that story? If that move was made, why not for this case of Oparanya? If at all, uh, Ruto has good intentions in this nomination. If at all, there is no something that is being, there is no hidden agenda behind it. Why is Oparanya be becoming, a, a, serving as an example? And do you think Oparanya will not sell through? I was looking at the list of uh, the vetting committee. And I checked, at, and I did a, a thorough check on those uh, people, the members of the vetting committee, and realized that there is no way Oparanya's name will be dropped from that uh, vetting. Most likely, I think Oparanya at a Peter. You see, if Mithika Lenturi could survive the committee that was set up to deal with this issue, what about Oparanya? And Mithika Lenturi's issue was a concern, was a, was a national concern, but he still managed to go through. With the nominate with the with with, the, with the, actually the investigation the investigative committee still decided to to declare to declare him as a non corrupt and as clean as cotton wool. So this issue of Oparanya will actually be the same as what Mithika Linturi faced. And Oparanya's nomination basically mean on a Peter. It Peter because why the parliament has been captured. Uh, that's something that we cannot deny has been captured and if the, cap the parliament has been captured who are the members of the voting committee parliamentarians again the same same people the same same group that has been captured I was looking at the names just check the names on the screen there those are people who cannot shoot down these names and the whole uh, team is headed by Oparanya then there's Gladys Boshile then we have Mishiboko there you know, Mishimboko is an ODM uh, diehard and they will never, you know, recommend something that is not uh, going to work for the benefit of uh, people like Oparanya, who is his deputy party leader. But I think Oparanya has resigned from that position and some people will take over those positions. So what, what I'm trying to say is very simply, ladies and gentlemen, that Oparanya Nikama Anakwa Setup. Mino na kama uparanya alikuwa setup.
So it's just a matter of time. Let us just wait for uh, uh, the Sunday. But personally, I think Oparani could have been set up here. So let's just give it a, a benefit. So let's just wait for the 4th of August for what will happen from the vetting committee. So until you catch up again, please stay safe and stay blessed.